welcome everyone in this video we are going to discuss laplace transform laplace transform is a linear operator on a function x of t with real argument which transforms it to a function x of x with complex argument where s is equal to sigma plus j omega in signal and system the real argument usually represents time domain and complex argument usually represents frequency domain so if we have a signal x of t if we convert it into the laplace domain we will we will get x of s so what laplace transform does that it converts a function in one variable to a function of another variable it converts a function in one domain to a function of another domain specifically speaking it converts a function in time domain to a function in complex frequency which is s domain fine and laplace transform is an integral transform if you can have a look we have written general equation for an integral transform we have g of alpha which is the output of the signal and this is the function and this output is the function of alpha fine then we have f of t which is the input of the signal and this is the and this is the function of time t fine it is in time domain and then we have this k alpha t this k alpha t dt is called integral kernel kernel means central or important point this k alpha t is called integral kernel and this integral kernel is dependent on both alpha and t alpha was uh, the output variable t was the input variable this integral ker uh, kernel is dependent on input variable as well as the output variable so what this does that it converts a function in one variable to a function of another variable like here we have a function an input function f of t which was in time domain has been converted into the alpha domain similarly similar is the case of laplace transform similar is the case of fourier transform they both are integral transform which converts function in one domain to a function in another domain for example fourier transform fourier transform was also an integral transform why because we have x of omega which is the output and which is the function of omega so the output is a function of omega output is in omega domain we have x of t which is the input signal which is in time domain which is a function of t which is in time domain and then we have e power minus j omega t dt this e power minus j omega t dt is called integral kernel which is dependent on both omega and t which is dependent on both output variable and input variable t so this is the integral kernel so this fourier transform converts a function in time domain to a function in omega domain similarly laplace transform converts a function in time domain to a function in s domain s is a complex frequency or complex variable domain so laplace transform converts a function in time domain to a function in s domain which is a complex variable or complex function so we can say that laplace transform is a general case of fourier transform and if we take laplace transform usually represents it like this by this curve l if you take uh, this l denotes the laplace transform of the function and when we uh, whenever we take the laplace transform of the function we say that we have output as f of s which means that the output is a uh, is a function of variable s which is a complex variable so the general definition of laplace transform is this this is the mathematical equation of laplace transform remember that you might uh, get this integration from 0 to infinity that laplace transform is unilateral laplace transform if you get this integration from minus infinity to plus infinity that is uh, bilateral laplace transform so this laplace transform is bilateral laplace transform and if we compare with fourier transform which was the previous side this one we see that by replacing j omega by s we are generalizing fourier transform that's why we say that laplace transform is a general case of fourier transform because when we place j omega by s we are getting fourier transform and the laplace transform in s domain 
S is actually a complex variable which consists of two parts. One is the sigma part, another is the omega part, j omega part, which is the imaginary part. So real pl part plus imaginary part. Drawback of Fourier transform is that it does not exist for non-absolutely integrable signal. But Laplace transform do exist for abs non-absolutely integrable signals. What is absolutely integra integrable signals? We will discuss it in next incoming slides. So Laplace trans the Fourier transform does not exist for non-absolutely integrable signals, but Laplace transform do exist for non-absolutely integrable signals, which means that the Laplace transform can be applied to a broader range of signals. Now Laplace transform is again, uh, as I said earlier, Laplace transform is, uh, in, in, is in S domain, which is a complex domain, which is a complex variable or complex frequency domain. Whereas Fourier transform is in omega domain, which is a real domain. And this S domain consists of two parts. One is the real part, one is the imaginary part. One is the sigma part, which is a real part that is called damping factor. And it tells about the magnitude of the signal. It tells about the stability of the signal because the st the, from the magnitude of the signal, we can comment on the stability of the signal. So this alpha, so this sigma, this damping factor tells about the magnitude of the signal or the stability of the signal. And omega is the angular frequency, which is radians per second. So S, S is equal to sigma plus J omega. S is the complex variable or complex frequency. So if you are asked what is complex frequency, you should say that a type of frequency that depends on two parameters. One is sigma, which controls the magnitude of the signal, and the other is omega, which controls the rotation of the signal. Now, what is th the relation between the Laplace and Fourier transform? If we have a Laplace transform, it can be made equal to Fourier transform if we substitute S is equal to J omega. That is, if we substitute sigma is equal to zero. Fine. So we have this definition of Laplace transform. We have written the equation of Laplace transform, which is e power minus st. And s is equal to sigma plus j omega, which I have substituted here. Now, by substituting sigma is equal to 0, we have f of t e power j omega minus j omega t dt, which is the definition of the Fourier transform. So Laplace transform is equal to the Fourier transform when s is equal to j omega, or when sigma is equal to 0. Now condition for existence of Laplace transform. Again, we have this definition of Laplace transform that we have discussed earlier. This is a bilateral Laplace transform and we can substitute S with, uh, with sigma plus j omega as S is a complex uh, variable which consists of two parts, real and imaginary parts, sigma and j omega. We have replaced it here. Now what we have done is that we have called this e power minus sigma t and this f of t, f of t is the input signal. We have called this as f1 of t. Fine. So we call this f of t and e power minus sigma t as f1 of t. So the plus transform will only exist if f1 of t is absolutely integrable. Fine. If f1 of t, which is f of t multiplied by e power minus sigma t f of t is the input signal. So Laplace transform will only exist if f of t, f1 of t is absolutely integrable or if f of t multiplied by e power minus sigma t is absolutely integrable. Fine. So Laplace transform will only exist if input signal multiplied by this e power minus sigma t is absolutely integrable. By absolutely integrable means we take the substitute value, we take the integration from minus infinity to plus infinity. If we, ta if we, uh, if, if we get a finite value, we say that this is absolutely integrable. If we do not get a finite value, if we get an infinite value, we say that this is non-absolutely integrable. So the plus transform to exist the function f of t which is the input signal multiplied by e power minus sigma t must be absolutely integrable fine now how it this is different from different from fourier transform in fourier transform the input signal needed to be uh, absolutely integrable in the plus transform the input signal multiplied by e power minus sigma t 
needs to be absolutely integrable for example if i have a function which is e power 2t fine and we have u of t fine if i have this function now we know that this function which is e power 2t u of t exponential function with power 2t u of t this is uh, non absolutely integrable signal why because we know that e power 2t is an unstable signal if we have, when time approaches in infinity e power 2t approaches infinity so this is non absolutely integrable signal so the fourier transform if if we have this input signal the fourier transform of this input signal does not exist because this is non absolutely integrable signal but if we are asked to find the laplace transform of this signal we can easily find laplace transform of this signal because e power 2t will be will also be multiplied by e power minus sigma t and when i multiply e power minus sigma t i can easily take laplace transform of this signal so the fourier transform of this signal does not exist because it it is non absolutely integrable signal but the laplace transform exists because for the laplace transform this function multiplied by e power minus sigma t must, must be absolutely integrable so that's the difference between fourier and laplace transform laplace transform is applied to a broader range of signals and the range of sigma defines region of convergence we will discuss the region of convergence in next videos okay so what is the physical difference between laplace and fourier transform so think of fourier transform as plot of how much each of uh, frequ each of frequency is inside a signal if you added up all the frequencies and weighted them according to fourier transform you will get your signal back so fourier transform de decomposes a signal in into its constituent frequency component so if you add up all those frequency components you will get the signal back a fourier transform is a special case of laplace transform or we can say that the laplace transform is a general case of fourier transform which includes a damping factor which includes sigma because in laplace transform uh, we are also cons uh, consider we are are we are also concerned with sigma which which it give, which which uh, gives an idea about the magnitude of the signal and from the magnitude we can tell about the stability of the signal so laplace transform is concerned with the stability of the signal we are as fourier transform which tells us about the frequency components of the signal is primarily concerned with uh, with, with 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 the frequency components that are present in the signal and that can be used in designing filters remember that fourier transform is used for a periodic signal and fourier series is used for periodic signals now what is the significance of laplace transform we have discussed the definition of laplace transform we try to visualize laplace transform we try to uh, we try to differentiate between laplace transform and a fourier transform physically but what is the significance of the laplace transform why are we talking so much about the laplace transform the reason is that the laplace transform converts convolution operation into simple product operation fine so convolution is a very difficult process to do while product multiplying two functions is a very simple process to do so con uh, laplace transform converts convolution operation into simple product operation the second advantage of the laplace transform is that it converts differential equation into algebraic equation so to solve differential equation we know that it's it's a bit difficult to solve differential equation but if we convert it into algebraic equation we can easily solve algebraic equation so laplace transform converts differential equation into algebraic equation and then we can easily solve those algebraic equations now laplace transform of some common signals first laplace transform of unit impulse signal again the definition of laplace transform is this so we have this laplace transform and then we have the input signal which is the unit impulse i can represent the input signal by by f of t which is delta of t fine which is sigma of t fine now uh which is this of t now 
f of s is equal to minus infinity into infinity that unit impulse signal e power minus st dt fine that's the definition of the impulse uh, uh, that's the definition of the laplace transform where f of t is substituted with this unit impulse signal after substituting we can also write this signal as delta of t minus 0 fine 0 does not impact minus 0 plus 0 does not impact so we can write it here why we are writing though well, we are, why we are writing this 0 here because we want to use a very important property of impulse signal and if you remember in the properties of impulse signal one property was that if you run impulse signal from minus infinity to infinity and it's this impulse signal is multiplied by some function x of t multiplied by the delayed version of uh, uh, this impulse signal the output will be x of t naught fine so if the signal uh, is x of t the output will be x of t naught so here we have zero and then we have x of t this thing e power minus st is here so we will so the answer of this will be e power minus and then we will replace 0 here because we have x of t naught this is my x of t and we will replace 0 here so we will get e power minus 0 or e power 0 we will get 1 so the Laplace transform of unit impulse signal is 1 fine next is unit step signal again this is the definition of uh, this is the definition of Laplace transform we have the input signal which is the unit impulse signal u of t now we will write the definition of impulse signal we will write the definition definition of laplace transform and we will substitute f of t by u of t because our input signal is u of t and we know that u of t runs from 0 to infinity so this uh, range of integration will change from 0 to infinity so now we have 0 to infinity and we also know that the value of step signal is 1 step signal is unit step signal is uh, the amplitude or the magnitude of unit impulse signal is 1 from t is equal to 0 and onward so we can replace 1 here fine 1 multiplied by e power minus st is e power minus st now we take the uh, integration of this signal when we take the integration of this signal we will get minus 1 by s e power minus st and then we have the limits which is from infinity to 0 when we substitute these limits we get 0 minus 1 and then we get 1 by s so the Laplace transform of unit impulse signal is 1 by s next next is Laplace transform of exponential signal again we have the definition of bilateral Laplace transform and then we have the signal which is an exponential signal which is e power minus t u of t so we will substitute e power minus t u of t in this f of t so here we go here we have substituted because we have u of t and u of t is from 0 and onward so the range of integration has been changed it has been changed to 0 to infinity so this is 0 to infinity and after rearranging this equation we get this fine and then we integrate this signal so the integration of this signal is e power minus s plus 1 divided by minus s plus 1 so I have taken out the minus 1 divided by s plus 1 uh, uh, and then we have this e power minus s plus 1 of uh, s, s plus 1 into 2 after putting this infinity and 0 we get 0 minus 1 and finally we get 1 1 divided by s plus 1 so the Laplace transform of this signal e power minus 2 is 1 divided by s plus 1 so now we will see the Laplace transform of some of the common signals. The Laplace transform of 1, which is actually, uh, which is uh, throughout 1, which is also, uh, we can call it a unit step signal, if, if it is for t greater than 0. The Laplace transform of this is 1 by s. If we have e power a t, e power positive a t, we will have Laplace transform 1 divided by s minus 1. If we have e power minus a t, we will have Laplace transform 1 divided by s plus 1. And if we have Laplace transform t power n, we will have n factorial divided by s n plus 1. Fine. For example, the Laplace transform of t is, because t is t power 1, so we will have 1 factorial, which is 1 divided by s 1 plus 1. 
so the Laplace transform of t will be 1 divided by s square similarly the Laplace transform of t square will be 2 divided by s cube so the Laplace transform of tn is n factorial divided by sn plus 1 the plus transform of sine b, bt is this thing b divided by s square plus b square and cosine bt is this thing similarly the Laplace transform of these three signals are also given thank you